Welcome to the grid. It's hot, fantastic crowd, fully expectant of a challenging afternoon of motorsport. It's a short run down to the first corner for the two front row sitters. Of course, Lewis Hamilton, a fraction ahead of Fernando Alonso. There is the view. It's curved even all the way down to that braking zone. We've got to assume that the computers on those two McLarens will get the cars almost in formation down there. So Lewis should have the advantage. What they've got to be careful of, and we'll have a look in a minute, is uh, Nick Heidfeld in third place. We think he's lighter on fuel. He may well elect to put the softer tyres on, which we think will be uh, no good over a longer run. He'll do the shorter run with those and uh, he might just be a nuisance to them on the first lap, more so Alonso than, uh, than Lewis, I'd imagine. Lewis, on the uh, grippy side of the track, the, the racing side of the track, and i just see if we can uh, get hold of Anthony, his dad, and, you know, I never want, I don't want to, uh, uh, I, I don't want to uh, bother Lewis too much, because I'm sure the first time we talk to him, he's going to have a dreadful day. He's had a third place, followed by four second places in his first five races. Anthony, tell us uh, what's going on. Uh, how's, how's Lewis, what's he said to you today? Uh, he's not said much at all, actually. He's just been smiling all day, smiling all night, and uh, hoping that he gets a good start off the grid today. Now, does he watch the previous races uh, closely? Has he, has he analysed them? Yeah, I mean, he's done his homework, obviously, and um, I think what he's going to try and do today is just keep his fingers crossed, try and get a clean start, and if he can get, into the, get in and out of the first corner, hopefully it'll be his day. Now, I think a lot of drivers are going to go off today because we saw the track breaking up last year. you got a lot of marbles on the outside. It's a, a bumpy place, treacherous racetrack. Yeah. How confident are you that he's absolutely ready to, to go and be the man to stay in front? Well, to be honest, I think, you know, like with everything Lewis does, as long as he has a good day, you know, if we win the race, that's a bonus. But as long as we get some points, bring the car home, and that's what he's going to be looking to do. You know, he's not going to push or do anything silly. We just want to bring the bring the car home and get the points today. But you looked absolutely destroyed when he didn't win Monaco. So you, you're playing this game, but but I'm sure at the end of the day, you you think he's ready to win it. I was destroyed we didn't win Monaco because I like to win. But um, you know, it's all a learning curve, the whole thing. All right, we'll have a great day and wish wish him good uh, luck for us. Cheers. Right, let's wander over and see if we can uh, find the fellow front row sitter, Fernando Alonso. I've got it. I've missed him. He's gone off to the toilet, unfortunately. Let's go and find... Well, here's the real boss of, uh, of McLaren, Mrs. Lisa Dennis. Uh, Lisa and Cathy Auger. Come on, girls. You've got the inside line at McLaren. Which one of the McLaren drivers is going to win this afternoon? One or the other, we hope. Yeah, well, what's going on? What, what's the strategy? What's the... And I don't mean in terms of laps and all that sort of thing, but it, uh, you must be super confident, yeah? I think it looks good. We're in the right place on the grid. We've got the Ferraris behind us. That's what we want. So, yeah, and may the best man win. All right, good luck. Love to see you. Right, let's see if we can find uh, Nick Heidfeld in third place. Just a tre tremendous uh, job he did here. For, uh, let's see if we can find him under the umbrella. Nick, can we have a quick word? ITV, top man. Excuse me, mate. I'm going to have to stand in front of your camera. Um, yeah. You found a nice, cool place down here, and uh, great job in qualifying. Yeah, qualifying was quite exciting actually for us, mainly because uh, yesterday morning I didn't get any running into it. Now in Monaco, you started with the softer tyres, and you did a lot of damage to uh, other people by passing them in the early part of the race. Might you do that again today? Uh, you will see. I mean, we we try to learn, obviously, from from our last races. We also did that in Melbourne. I was on P3 there. As usual, there are some positives and some negatives. With the soft tyres, you, you have a better start. Uh, if you're on a low fuel strategy, like I was in, in Melbourne, you do the shorter stint, so it's not that easy. Now, tell us about the, the track was breaking up in qualifying at the, at the hairpin turn 10. What's it look like at the moment? Actually, I find it ridiculous because it's not the first time that that happens and they should manage to, to do it. You know, last year, for example, Jacques went into the wall because of that problem yesterday. Fernando lost his pole due to that. They tried to rectify it now, but uh, it's just unacceptable, I find. So you think it might break up again in the race? Uh, when we went through there on the driver's parade, I don't know if they put tarmac or if they maybe took something away. Uh, I don't know what, what will happen. OK, well, the track's a living thing. Thank you for your time. And uh, let's see if we can uh, see if we can find... We haven't spoken to Kimi Raikkonen this year. I don't... Right, he's over near this glorious Ferrari. Look at this, this is one of the few opportunities you get to just poke around with Formula One cars and just get really good shots there. 
they, they really are fully exposed on the grid. It's a new color they've painted, sort of like a darker metallic red. And uh, Kimi is over there. Let's see if we can... Last time I spoke to him was in Brazil last year where he did give me a one-word answer, but it wasn't the word we were necessarily looking for. No. Nope. Okay, you want me to go around the back? That's fair enough. Quick word, Kimi. Quick word for ITV. Just one word. Okay. No, nope. that is the word, isn't it? And uh, as a man, another man I want to see, which is Martin Whitmarsh. You're not the man I was heading to see, but we uh, we want to know what's going to happen with your two McLarens. You've obviously had to ref referee them in Monaco quite heavily. Are you expecting to do the same today? No, we're hoping to have a one-two. We don't care who's first, we don't care who's second. So I know there's, contrary to people's belief, I think we want to win the race here and we'll do what we think is right during the race. I think we've got two sensible drivers. They're pretty uh, uh, you know, on the case. They both want to win. It's a pretty good problem to have, really. OK, good stuff. Now, I understand... Uh, Lewis didn't follow team radio instruction in Monaco. He, he chose not to hear them. Is that true? I think Lewis drove a great race, and uh, I'm sure he will here today. That's a yes, then. Thank you. <laughs> right. We've just got... Uh, let me see if I can find Mark Webber, because I think he did a sterling job in qualifying. It's nice to be finding plenty of drivers. Mark Webber is not there. Sixth on the grid for Red Bull. And uh, one key challenge today is going to be the brakes. They're going to have to... The last ten laps of the race... They have to watch out for the brakes on this circuit. Back to you, Steve. 